Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and I'm not feeling too great. I haven't been feeling great all day. And, um, yeah, I just want to thank my subscribers for having my back. And, um, yeah, for your support. And if it's the first time you're passing through, please subscribe, share and like. Um, today's video, I was sent a video um, that I was quite alarmed by. I got it this morning and, you know, because I got it this morning and you're kind of waking up and you're kind of rushing, I did a quick thing, you know, like a two minute video. And then afterwards I thought to myself, after some reflection, I said, you know what, I'm going to give it some more thought and reflect over it a little bit and give it a bit more body, a bit more meat. And so I deleted that one and I decided to amalgamate all the information, you know, like from the reason why we had fears about the ship in the first place, um, you know, our history and um, the possible scenarios of what, if the fish, if the ship is even damaged. I mean, I couldn't find anything on, um, on Jamaica media. It, not unless, you know, they put it up since, but I was kind of trolling through, putting headline news and all sorts, and I couldn't find it. So I don't even know if this is real, but if it is real, it's this, this, um, if, even if it's not real, this video is still valid because it puts things into perspective. I'm hoping it's not real, to be honest, because I wouldn't like to see that ship damaged on Jamaican property or on Jamaican soil. I prefer if it's going to get an electrical fault, if something happens to it, you know, that it's done out of Jamaica's um, line of fire. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, let me show you the video. It's very, very, very short. There is some kind of profanities in there. So if you don't like profanities, you better not listen. You better close your ears now. But literally, it's about a two-minute video, okay? Hey, Jamaica, no easy, you know? They don't know the same one, they're going to be shit. Even them going to be blood clad shit, dog. It's same look at white shit. What is the going to kill all the people, then? Eh? What is the going to fire, dog? I want it blood. <laughs> hey, hey, Jamaica, I'm going to be shit. I'm going to be blood clad. Well, I'm going to be blood clad. He makes it sound as though it's deliberate. I mean, he just looks as though he's somebody who's driving by and who's taken a video of it. So we don't know the background. And you have to ask yourself, in isolation with that guy's, um, without that guy's commentary, what would you have thought if you saw that ship um, docked, damaged? I thought of Grenfell Tower because that was caused by an electrical fault. And look at the damage that happened to it. I mean, that, that ship hasn't got cladding and all kinds, but that's what I thought about. But you just don't know whether it was sabotage, whether it was an electrical fault. We don't know if there's somebody out there trying to set, um, set Jamaica up. You just don't know. Because I tell you something that, you know, so I was kind of, um, did a video about Nigeria and, you know, the way there's so much conflict all over the place. I know it's end times. I know prophecy must fulfill. But, you know, there's some things that just seem to be stirring. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, why did that ship come to Jamaica and all those other Caribbean islands? Why? Now, some people might say, that's why they say um, either ignorance is bliss, what you don't know, you don't worry about. Knowledge is power. Sometimes when you have a bit of knowledge, it can be dangerous. But that is why a lot of people were worried about that ship coming, because they kind of thought about that Tuskegee experiment, which I'm going to share with you a little bit later. And also that's compounded with the fact that 92% of um, America I rely on health care that's given by their employers and if it's not given by their employers they're employed they're in their um it's not paid by insurance they don't get free health care so you kind of think to yourself well if they don't give free health care in America why would they give free health care to people in the Caribbean and especially when they talk about them so derogatory so derogatorily. So um, 
I think that's what causes the concerns most of all. But I did write a few notes and I did want, did want to give you some statistics about America and their healthcare system because it all compounds this situation and why people are fearful and concerned. Um, I don't know if that guy in the video... I don't know if he saw something. I don't know if he's a witness. I don't know what he is. But he has kind of made it, he th number one, he thinks it's funny, which it's not, because you're dealing with government property, and that's not funny. And that would constitute arson, actually. You know, by his impl by his implication, by saying, oh, you know, the bone up the ship, dog, and all that kind of crap, you know, it's kind of, it's very... Um, so incriminating. So he doesn't know, unless he saw it, what's happened to the ship. Anyway, my point is, why is the ship there in the first place? And what I'm saying is, is that why I think sometimes it could be a setup is if it is there genuinely to give a service. You see, if, if the Americans had told the public, there was a public release that said, okay, we are coming to um, Jamaica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, Trinidad and Tobago, whichever islands, you know, they also went to Latin America. And they said, okay, look, we're going to come over and we're going to offer some free supplies. You don't have to worry because what we're getting in return is A, B, C, D and E, whatever that A, B, C, D and E is. People could put it in context and think, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense why America, who doesn't offer free healthcare in their country, would offer free healthcare to Caribbeans. But out of context, out of a background, out of knowing what the background is, people are bound to speculate. And, think, and usually when you speculate, you tend to think the worst. Anyway, let me get back to this. Um, so, that arrival of the... U.S. naval ship reminds of the Tuskegee spent. I've already said that. Nobody wants history repeated. And that's another reason for concerns um, about the... Okay, a little bit about the American's health system. One in five were denied health care in USA because they don't have the requisite insurance. And if you don't have the insurance, you don't have the health care. And, and the insurance is not is not cheap. I was fortunate when I was working in that organisation that I worked in, I had Blue Cross Blue Shield. They paid, I think, 75% um, and I paid 25%, which was practically nothing. But that was like the top notch medical service. But for the regular John Joe, they probably just get, unless you're working for a government, you just get the regular, you know, insurance that may not cover you for everything. And apparently, yeah, let me tell you, let me just explain this. According to a 219 consumer survey, the health of a 53 million, that's 53 million insured Americans may be in jeopardy from insurance companies that refuse to cover treatments for chronic or persistent illnesses. And that's what I mean. Those people who have a less than a non-governmental insurance these insurance companies don't want to cover them because it's costing too much money. And especially if it's a persistent thing like cancer or, um, like they said, whatever, chronic persistent illnesses. I can only think of things like cancer, maybe diabetes, um, leukemia, those kind of things. They don't want to treat, they don't want to treat them. They don't want to cover them. So they're being denied insurance. What do those people do? So yet, and yet, with that background, we are informed that between the 20th of October and the 1st of November, the US Naval Hospital ship was being anchored in Kingston, offering free medical services. So it's bound to, you know, raise alarm bells. It's bound to. So, um, that video came to me today. So... That ship was supposed to be only there between the 28th of October and the 1st of November. Does that mean it was still there? Why would it still be there after the deadline? That's why I'm wondering whether or not this is, you know, people on social media, they can send out anything, you know. And, you know, we as vloggers, 
we rely on a lot of the information we get as being from credible sources but we can't always verify that and so sometimes when you see something like that you're kind of thinking oh yeah that must be real and then when you check it out maybe it's not maybe it's fake news i don't know but i still think whatever's in this video is still relevant because the ship has come hopefully it's gone and hopefully it's in one piece um so there's no repercussions Okay, um, so anyway, America offering free medical services is bound to England. I said that. Okay, so the surgeries that they were offering, um, bearing in mind that they don't offer this for free in America, would include ophthalmology, general surgery, orthopedic surgery, oral maxil maxillofacial surgery, plastic surgery. I can't imagine them offering that wound care and urology and the categories of services offered at the medical walk-ins which were located at sabina park sports complex in kingston and the greater portmore health center in st catherine would be offering adult medical services pediatric medical services i don't know why they separated those two not unless there's an area in there where they don't cover i mean why wouldn't they say all you know adult and paediatric why wouldn't they just say everybody anyway um dental services optometry physical therapy and dermatology and they were open from 8 a.m to 4 p.m so they were putting in resources for three days offering free services we have to ask ourselves that if the u.s health system does not provide free healthcare to the country's entire population. Instead, most citizens are covered by a combination of private insurance and various federal and state programs. Why would they be offering the time, the resources and services for free in the Caribbean? And that is the question that remains unanswered. Because if they have made a deal with the Jamaican government, the Jamaican government should be telling the people to allay any fears. You know, all they've got to do is do a broadcast and say, look, um, we've made an agreement with America to come over and offer free services and we're going to give them access to something or we're going to give them something that they want. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. But that's probably why uh, the Jamaican government might not even want to share that information. But America's not going to do nothing for free. There has to be, we, historically, we know they don't give in. It's not one of those countries. It's not like the UK with the NHS. And even that's not free. We pay for that, the workers. So that's not free, even though people think it's free because they can just go in there and they don't have to be billed. So there's this, there's this perception that it's free, but it's not. So, so when you're thinking about that, okay, the American health system, and we're thinking about our history, which is what kind of compounds the concerns. And what is our history? We've got, we, we do have that Tuskegee experiment still in our minds because they took innocent people and allowed them to die. I mean, some people, some sources say they were actually injected with syphilis and in other sources they're saying that the, some some of them had syphilis already and some of them didn't those that they didn't that didn't have syphilis um those that did have syphilis they weren't aware of the symptoms but they didn't treat them even though they had even though um they had access to penicillin which could have helped it but the other 201, I don't know if they injected them with syphilis because there's two different sources and they don't say much about the 201, only about they're saying that those who didn't have it, they just watched them die. They didn't treat them and they died in agony. They went blind. They went mental and all sorts. They had mental illnesses and all sorts. So... So we've got that Tuskegee spear experiment. Sl modern slavery is real. Overrepresentation of black men in prison. You know, that's real because they're denied all their rights. They're enslaved, basically. They can't go where they want to go. They can't procreate. They can't do anything, really. So um, 
that still exists. Then we've got excessive force and abuse of power by police. So that doesn't make us too, feel too comfortable with the system. That we don't feel as though the system has got our backs. And this is not only in England, it's in the UK, it's in Jamaica. We don't feel the system has our backs. So I'm just trying to um, explain the reasons why people are concerned and worried. Uh, algorithm bias is real, especially in the UK. Um, racial profiling is real. Unlawful detentions and deportations, that's real. The Windrush scandal is real. People are concerned about vaccines. You know, there's some theories about that. And um, like I said, America does not offer free health care. So when you think about um, the history of people not treating black people fairly, it, you would be suspicious when all of a sudden somebody's actually going to be nice to you. It's like, hold on a minute, what's going on here? You know, you would have, you would be suspicious. So anyway, the United States as a whole does not have a fully implemented universal healthcare system, but about 92% of its citizens have health insurance coverage as of 2017. In the States, there is no NHS. If somebody gets ill, it's likely that they will have to pay for their treatment. The US government does fund two kinds of health plans through Medicare and Medicaid. However, if employed, many Americans have their health care paid for by their employer. So hopefully they are employed. So when you examine these facts, compounded by reminders of our legacy of being treated unfairly by the system, it's no wonder that black Caribbeans are wary about the US Navy comfort ship. Caribbean residents are bound to question why is the ship on our island and related to the Tuskegee experiment. And so that's what I'm saying, you know, if you didn't have that background, if you didn't have that information, if you didn't know about the Tuskegee experiment, you know, people would have been bored in that ship. That's why I'm saying sometimes ignorance is bliss. And sometimes it's not. Um, the Tuskegee, I'll just tell you a little bit about the Tuskegee um, study. The Tuskegee, well, formally, I mean, I did mention it before. The Tuskegee Syphilis Study, or to give it its full name, the Tuskegee Study of Untreated Syphilis in the Negro Male, was a notorious clinical study that has become a byword for racist and unethical medical experimentation. It ran from 1932 to 1972 and involved 600 black men, 399 with latent syphilis and 201 who were free from the disease. Now, that's what I'm wondering. Maybe um, they, because I know I read it that they were injected with syphilis. So I don't know if the 201 were the people that were injected with, with the disease. Anyway, for 40 years, those who had syphilis were never told they had it and were never treated for it even when penicillin became a standard cure in 1947. One of the main aims of the study was to see whether syphilis affected black men differently from white men. After being recruited for the experiment and participating in the study, the men received free rides to and from the clinic at Tuskegee University, Alabama. They, they, there they had hot meals and free medical treatment for minor ailments. And remember, these people were poor, and impoverished, and there was um, crop, crop, whatever you call them, crop something or other. They dealt with the crops. Anyway, even when 250 of the men were drafted for service in the Second World War, strings were pulled to ensure that they remained part of the study instead. So hence the fears, similarities are just too close. The participants were primarily sharecroppers who tended to be uneducated and poor and many had never visited a doctor before. Doctors from the US Public Health Service, PHF, which was running the study, informed participants, 399 men with the latent syphilis, meaning that they had the infection but showed no obvious symptoms at that stage, and a control group of 201 others who were free of the disease that the treatments were for get, were getting the treatment that they were getting was for their bad blood but which were actually placebos aspirin or mineral supplements bad blood was a term commonly used in the area at the time to refer to a variety of ailments in order to track the disease's full progression Researchers provided no effective care as the men died, went blind, or insane, or experienced other severe health problems due to their untreated syphilis. In the mid-1960s, 
the PHS Venerable, Venerable Disease Investigator in San Francisco, named Peter Buxton, found out that the Tuskegee study and expressed his concern to his superiors that it was unethical. In response, PHS officials formed a committee to review the study, but ultimately opted to continue it with the goal of tracking the participants until all had died. Autopsies were performed and the project data could be analysed. Can you imagine? Rather than heal them, they just want to watch them die, watch their reaction, watch the symptoms until they died and then they'd form autopsies on them. As a result, Buxton leaked the story to a reporter friend who passed it on to a fellow reporter, Jean Heller, of the Associated Press. Heller broke the story in July 1972, prompting a public outrage and forcing the study to shut down. When the study ended in 1972, following the public outcry, only 74 of the original participants were still alive. 28 men had died of the disease and a further 100 or so of related complications. 40 wives had been infected and 19 children had been born with congenital syphilis. Survivors eventually received financial compensation and in 1997, US President Bill Clinton was moved to declare that on behalf of the American people, what the United States government did was shameful. So, you can understand with that background why people were worried about the ship coming. That doesn't, um, that doesn't justify if that ship has been damaged deliberately for that that being the case. Like I said, I'm hoping it's an electrical fault and um, and I'm hoping it's not a setup because you never know. But whatever the cause, we'll, we will find out. You know, if it's really, if it's really true, this is going to have some serious, serious repercussions. And the American government are already going to be on it. And if it's being silenced, it's being silenced for a reason. So we'll just have to watch this space, peeps, and hope that this has got nothing to do with Jamaica, with Jamaicans, even though it's on their soil, and that you know there's a there's a resolution or we come to some conclusion and that we hear about it. Or maybe this is a fabrication. That would be the best case scenario. That this is a load of bull. Somebody is taking the pee, hoping that it get you know, hoping that it's going to ruffle some feathers. Who knows? Some people just haven't got anything to do. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.